In this video, we're going to continue our work with activity networks and start looking at critical path analysis. Our first port of call will be to look at early event times and late event times. We saw in the last video that an activity network can model a real-life project such as building a house. Often these projects have deadlines, which means activities starting and finishing on time is important to avoid missing that deadline. We're going to consider now early event times and late event times. The early event time is the earliest time we can arrive at an event before an activity or activities can start. And we've seen this in action with the presence table. So we might have activity A and that will go into an event and we have activity in B, B and C dependent on A. So we can't start B and C until A has been completed. The late event time is the latest time that we can leave an event without missing the deadline or extending the project. So let's look now at a typical question. We're told the activity network for a project is given opposite. The time in hours needed to complete each activity is shown in brackets. Early and late times are shown at each vertex. We're asked to calculate the values of W, X, Y and Z. OK, let's first define a network. A network is a weighted graph. And in this particular case, the weight now is the time in hours. So this right here is an activity. This is activity A. And activity A takes three hours. What we're going to look at now are the nodes or vertices. These here are the events. The box on the top gives us now the early event time. The box on the bottom gives us the late event time. Sometimes these will be side, to, uh, side by side, so we'll have naught naught, we will have 3 3, we will have 7 Y. So you need to be cool with a different notation. So let's just have a look at this network. We can see that A relies on nothing, it's dependent on nothing. Therefore we can start this from the source node, from the beginning. So this is the source node and then we've got the sync node just here. So activity A takes 3 hours. That tells me now that the earliest time that we can start B and C is going to be three hours. So this now is my early event time. If we now consider B, B has a duration of six hours. That means that this event can't now start until nine hours has passed. So I can't start D until at least nine hours has passed. If we consider coming down this route right here, what we've got now is four. So C takes four hours. So we can't start E and F until seven hours has passed, as we need both A and C to have completed before we start E and F. We find now the early start time by completing what we call a forward pass or a forward scan. And that's what we're going to do here. So what we're going to do is look at the dependencies and we're going to move forward. So I'm interested now in the top boxes. So if we consider now the first value that we're going to look at is W. So we can see that A now goes into this event here. So B depends on A only. If we go up this route, we can see that we can start D now after 9. D takes 2 hours. Now, that means that the earliest time that we can start this activity here, so the early event time, is going to be the 9 plus the 2. We've got no other dependencies. We can start D after 9 hours. It takes 2 hours. So the earliest time that we could start G is going to be now 9 plus 2, which is going to be 11. So W is equal to 11. Now, what we've got to consider is X. X is the early start time. But we've got now that it's dependent on G, it's dependent on H, and it's dependent on F. We need to consider the largest number. This is now telling me the earliest time that I can finish this project. So if I went down this route, we've got now G. We've already taken 11 hours to get to this event. The earliest time we can start is 11, so 11 plus 5 is 16. This one right here, if we want to go from uh, using H now, we've got 9 and 4, that's 13. 
If we now consider what we've got here, we've got 7 and 4, which is 11. We have to take the largest number, which is going to be now 16. This cannot complete. The earliest time I can now get to this event right here is 16 hours. So we've got x is equal to 16. So what we've considered now is w, this uh, value right here is 11. We can't start g until 11, which means we can't finish the project until now 16. Or we can't get to this event just here before 16 hours has passed. So that's carrying out a forward scan. So we're finding the largest number to go in the top box. What we're now going to do is look at a back pass and find the lowest value, which is going to give us the late event time. So what we're going to do is work backwards. This early event time here, x, becomes the late event time z. So z is also going to be 16. So what we want to do now is work backwards. We want to find the value of y, and we want this value to be as small as possible. So if we went this way, what we would have now is 12. If we come down here, 12 minus 1 is 11. So we can see by coming back down, we're going to have a value of y of 11. That now is the lowest value. If I went this way, I'd end up now with 12. So what we're going to have here, y is going to be equal to 11. So that is the late, the late uh, uh, event time. Now, what this is saying now is the latest I can leave this event right here, this node or vertex, is after 11 hours to ensure that I don't delay this project. Because if we consider now, I do one hour and that will allow me now to get to this vertex and then I need four hours to complete H. So if I leave any later now than after 11 hours, this is not going to complete in 16 hours. So when we're carrying out the back pass, we need to find now the lowest number. On the forward pass, we needed the highest number. This time, we need the lowest number. So what this is saying now here, we can start C after three hours. It's going to take four hours. The earliest time that we could finish this now is after seven hours. But we got up to 11 hours, the 11 or in total 11 hours to complete this. And that's going to give us something we call float. And we're going to look at that later. But we can start this. So I could start this as late now as seven after seven hours and still ensure that I didn't delay the project as I would get in now. And that would give us our late start, uh, our late event time. But we needed to complete C before now the or on the 11 hours to ensure that we don't miss our deadline. It seems now that we could start this at 12 to finish this. But remember, now we've got the, that E and F are both dependent on C finishing. And that gives us now the 11. So that's an example of using a forward and back pass to find now the uh, early and late event times. With this particular case, it's not as easy to see as we're just simply working out values. So let's look at another example now. The activity network for a project is given opposite. So I've put it just here. The time in days needed to complete each activity is shown in brackets. We need to calculate the early and late times at each vertex. Now, with this, uh, the source node, we're always going to have naught, naught. Okay? We'll have naught, naught here. So let's consider now, and we need to think about the presence here, of the early event times. So what's the earliest now we can get to this event? Well, we're starting at naught. The only thing feeding into this event is the A, and that's going to be 8. So we can get now, the earliest time we can get to this is going to be 8. Let's now consider here. We're coming down this way. Now, you can go through as you wish. I prefer to come here, as we're going to consider dependencies later on. So we're starting now at naught. B takes six hours, so the earliest time that we could complete, and now B at this event, so the early event time is six. And remember, we're working in days. Okay, what's the quickest now if I can get to this event right here? Well, I'm here at eight, D is going to take seven, so the earliest that I can complete now is after 15 hours.
If we consider now C, we've only got the dependency here on A. So we've got now, we can start C after 8, that's going to be 9, so this is going to be 17. Okay, this now comes to our first decision to make. Remember, the dummy isn't actually an activity, and it now adds absolutely no weight. So this would add zero hours. So what we're looking at now is this event. I is dependent on both D and F being completed. Now, I can finish D after 15. But if we consider, I can't now start I until F has finished. We can't finish F until 21 hours because we can't start it until 17 has passed. So 17 plus the 4 on our forward pass is the largest number. So we can't start I until 21 hours has passed as F wouldn't be completed. So this is our early event time. So I is sitting there waiting and waiting for 21 hours. It can't start after 15 as it's dependent now also on F. Okay, let's now come down here. Let's have a look at this one right here. We've got E. E takes 5 hours. It can't start until 6 hours. 5 plus 6, that's going to give 11. So again, on the forward pass, we're filling out the top boxes with the early event times now such that this tells me that both H and K cannot start until we've got to the 11 hour point just here. So let's now consider this uh, vertex or node here. We need an early event time. What's the earliest time J can start? We've got three things to consider. I now can start I after 21 hours, so it would take 26 hours to complete I. If I consider D now, 15 hours as fed in here, which means the early event time now would be 15. 15 plus 5 is 20. So automatically, I'm saying to myself, it's going to be at least 26. We now need to consider that H is also feeding into this event. 11 plus 8 means I can get to here in 19 hours. So 19 hours, 20 hours, 26 hours. So J cannot start until I is complete. So this is 26. Now, this is our sync node. If we consider that I could get here now in 16, so we've got 11 and 5, which is 16, but our early uh, finish time just here, uh, essentially the finishing of the project, it can't finish until 31 hours, as now we can't start J until 26 hours have passed, so that's going to be 31. So the early event time for the completion of this project is 31 hours. So it's going to take us now 31 hours minimum to complete this on time. So let's now look at going the other way and finding now the late event times. So the early event time becomes the late event time and we go backwards. So this time we've considered the largest number as we're looking at the earliest time each event can start given its dependency. So what I want to do is now work out the lowest number. I want the lowest number in each of these boxes. So if I consider going back this direction, I can see now that going from 31 and taking off 5 is going to give me 26 hours. Now, as we'll see later on, this denotes a critical activity. This tells me that J is a critical activity, as it needs to start here at 26 and it needs to finish at 31. So it needs to start on time finish on time. There's no slack or leeway or what we call float on that one. And in a later video, we'll look at that. Now, what time can I put in this box here? Remember, this now is the latest that we can complete E. If I go this way, I'm at 26. Now, if I subtract 8, that's going to give me 26 minus the 8, which is going to give me 18. If I went this way, it would give me 26. We need to take the lowest number, so we're going to go up through J, down H, and that's going to give me 18. So what this tells me now is that E, activity E, can be started after 6 hours, 
but it doesn't need to be finished until 18 hours and then we still wouldn't delay the project. So I could start this after 13 hours, finish it after 18 and I'd still be on time to complete now in this 31 days. We're working in days, aren't we? Um, yeah, days rather than hours. So what I've looked at is finding the lowest number. Now this says that I can uh, finish E after 18 hours and that will not delay it. So let's look at getting back here. I've got 18. The only way back here now is for 5, so we're going to subtract that. So that's going to give me now uh, 13. So what does that say? That tells me if I can start now B from the beginning. It takes me 6 hours to do B, and the latest I can finish it without delaying the project is 13 hours. So if you think I could sit idle for 7 hours and then complete B in the 6 hours, and we still wouldn't delay the project. Okay. Let's now look at getting to this vertex here. We want now the lowest number. And we can see that going back up here is going to give 21. And again, that tells me that that's a critical event. So I, it's a critical event. And as stated, we will look at that later. Okay, I've now got a choice here. I can go to this event right here. Now, this value here is going to tell me that the, late, the latest time D can finish. I can either go this way or I can go up to I and down the dummy. We can see either way, but it doesn't matter. We're going to have 21, or if I go that way, I've got 21, and remember the dummy is zero. So if I come down, it's going to be 21. If I go that way, it's going to be 21. So we can now put 21, and that is the latest time that we can complete D without now delaying the project. So for example, if I finish D after 21 hours, then it would take me now five hours to do G, which would get me into 26, which would now get me into 31. If I finish D after 21, I need I, which is gonna be five hours, 21, five hours, we're still not delaying it. So this is what we've got. Now, just a, a bit of a consideration before we move on. The float for D is simply 21 minus seven minus eight. So that's gonna give us a float of now what we're going to have, we're going to have six hours. So we could start this after, um, we could start this after 14. So it means I've got four, uh, from uh, eight to uh, two fourteen to play with. That's your float. Your float is now the late event time minus the early event time minus the duration of the activity. And again, we will look at that in depth in a second video. Okay. What's the quickest I can get back here? Well, quite clearly, we've got four, that's for routine. We've got 21, 21 minus four, that's gonna give me 17, okay? If we consider now here, we've got the nine, and that's going to be here, so we're gonna end up now coming back with our eight, and we can see that the eight is gonna take us here. This, zero, this will always be zero, and we could even go and find a critical path on this. I'll save that for a later video, but hopefully that makes sense. Now, I could have gone back this way, but as you can see, we're going to get a larger value. I had the choice of coming down here. I knew it's critical, or I could have come back here. Going back there wouldn't have been ideal. 21 minus 7 is 14. We want now the late event time to be as low as possible. So there we go. That's starting to look now, and this will lead us on to the critical path analysis. We're looking at early event times and late event times. So let's just do a running commentary of this. Now, we can start A at naught. It takes eight hours. So the earliest now that we could start C is going to be um, after eight hours. C is going to take nine hours. So the earliest that we could finish C is going to be after 17 hours. The earliest we can start D is after eight hours. It takes seven hours. So the earliest that we can leave this vertex to start G is going to be now 15. So that's a consideration here. But we need to also, when we come up here, consider the multiple dependencies. I is dependent on D and F, which means that we have to take the larger value as we need F and D to be completed before I. So this is just working through your early start times or early event times and late event times. So in the next video, we'll go on to float and then we will look at critical activities and critical paths.